All right, welcome back, Vendetta Sports Fantasy Show. We're going two man weave today, two man duo. We got myself, Trey Dalbert, Alex Chick. What's I'm going back. on today? He's I'm back. back. I'm back, man. It was busy, so I'm I'm back though. You know, headbands back, cat ears are back. It's it's time to have a good show. We're gonna have a great show. We have some news to talk about because there's been so much news because. You know, I can't get these fuckers to record a show without me. Apparently, I got to carry the team on my back, though. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to talk about some position battles. And, of course, uh, our favorite segment of the week. Alex, do you have any opening remarks before I jump right in here? No, I think we're good, man. I'm, I'm excited for football, though. It's, it's inching closer. I'm, I'm getting ready for it. College football's on today. There's a FCS game on right yeah, now. I totally forgot about that. I thought, <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been more about NBA right now, so I need to get into college, though. Ready to watch the Celtics win the title? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, just maybe, man. I don't know. It's going to be close. Let's go over the topics for today, the first one being Elijah Holyfield and assistant head coach, running back coach Deuce Staley is hyping this man up. He likes where he's at, and pretty much I'll link all the articles in the description so you can read them, but so far, the Eagles do not have a veteran running back on the roster. It's Miles Sanders, Boston Scott. Holyfield is one of those guys battling for a third spot on the roster. Alex, does he have any fantasy value going forward? It's it's hard to say because – a lot of that's camp talk, you know, hyping up these guys. And, you know, it's hard to say, hey, this guy, you know. But you did mention that they don't really have a veteran veteran running back there. So, I mean, if they don't have a veteran running back, I feel like Miles Sanders, you know, his fantasy value goes down. And they we might see a little bit of a running back committee with, uh, you know, Holyfield and Boston Scott. So, it's, it's kind of hard to say. Um, I – it just brings down Miles Sanders' fantasy production for me, but I'm not sure if I'm, like, over here going to be like, oh, yeah, let me go get Holyfield. Exactly. Yeah, Holyfield is a guy that I really liked coming out of school. He was running back at Georgia. Really big physical runner. The only problem is he's slow. He runs a 4-7-something, which is not really what you want at the running back position. And that's a goal line guy, though. That's a big goal line guy for touchdowns. So, that I mean, a touchdown rich league, I mean, he might end up saving you. Yeah, I, I just think somebody needs to take the Jordan Howard role, so maybe it's Holyfield. I I feel like that's – yeah, I mean, I know you don't like PPR. But, like, for PPR people, Miles Sanders might be a really good look, but I don't know. And maybe in non-PPR leagues, then I don't know. I, Miles Sanders kind of loses his uh, fantasy value for me. Topic number two, Miami Dolphins trade Kalen Balage to the New York Jets. They receive a conditional – Seventh round pick, and of course we're going over this stuff because you know we haven't had a fantasy show in a while, so we have yeah. to cover this shit. Kalen Bilage, last year he averaged 1.8 yards a carry for the Miami Dolphins. Alex, ooh. does he have any fantasy value with the Jets? Ooh. Uh, ooh, no, I don't. I don't. That's that's just a 1.8. That's an ugly number, <laughs> but I don't think I don't think he necessarily has any fantasy value. I think that's Adam Gase. Uh, you know, he doesn't like Le'Veon Bell. I think that's pretty much clear. So, if you know what, I feel like if Le'Veon Bell, you know, they, he gets traded, gets released, or, you know, leaves or whatever, he just kind of get in another guy. But that's not a pretty number. I mean, it's just, no, I don't – I don't, I can't see him being anywhere, you know, relevant for the Jets for me. It's such a shame, too, because I really liked Kalen Balazs coming out of Arizona State. He was god-awful with Miami, but the good – I mean – the good news is maybe everybody was bad because the leading rusher for the Dolphins last year was Ryan Fitzpatrick. So it didn't matter oh which running back God. they used last year. They were all bad. It was a bad offensive line. So maybe it's a second chance at life for him. I think he'll make the roster, but at this point he's still behind bell Frank Gore and their new third round pick will Michael P Ryan. So, oh, I yeah. That, yeah. so yeah, just something to keep in mind. Yeah, it's not a big look for him. I don't I don't think it's that important for him, but, you know. All right, next piece of news. And, again, I will link all these in the description here. Blake Jarwin, Cowboys tight end, is getting some serious hype. Stephen Jones, 
Jerry Jones' son and pretty much everybody is saying Blake Jarwin's the fucking man. He catches everything. He's dominating. They couldn't speak higher of this guy. He is killing everything. Alex, is Blake Jarwin a fantasy sleeper at the tight end position? Uh, I, I would say he's a sleeper. I don't I wouldn't say he's actually a sleeper. I think I just really like Blake Jarlin. I wouldn't even say he's a sleeper. I think uh, I think he's going to be a really good tight end this year, especially where tight ends can be a very uh, hit or miss if you don't get like the top five. Um, but I really think Blake Jarwin's going to be, you know, kind of uh, prevalent at least in the Cowboys' offense, even with their three wide receivers. You know, with Cooper, Gallup, and uh, C.D. Lamb. I still think Jarwin's going to get his fair share and he might get a lot of touchdown receptions and that's going to be always good for tight ends. So I, I kind of believe the hype on Blake Jarwin. I don't think he's a, I don't, I think you could do far worse than him. Yeah. It's an interesting one for me because if the breakout was going to happen, wouldn't it have happened already? He's 26 years old already. He couldn't beat out Jason Witten last year. You got to beat out Jason Witten. <laughs> but at the same time, he posted all career high numbers and he only played 39% of the snaps. So Ooh. with Jason Witten out of town, maybe his numbers do go through the roof. But the other problem I have is they got Zeke, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb. We're, he's like the fifth guy who's going to get targets. There's a lot of mouths to feed there. Yeah, and that, that's why I'm like tight ends, they're important, but I'm like not – I'm not really big on, you know, trying to get – if I don't get the best tight end, I really don't. If I don't get one of those top five guys, I'm like, eh, I'll get a tight end some some point. And he might just be one of those tight ends at some point that I get that gets you, you know, maybe 10, 11 points every week or something. All right, next piece of news. And, again, we're brought to you by VendettaSportsMedia.com. Make sure to follow Alex, Chicks Tape Pod. His episodes are back. Yeah, I'm actually recording episodes. I'm probably going to record one tomorrow. So his, his episodes are back. Make sure to watch that. I'm Trey Dalbert. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. We're inching closer to 100. We're like, we're at 91, right? Right? 92. 92. 92. We're at 92. <laughs> okay. We're inching closer. So help us out and hit that subscribe button. Next piece of news here Jordan Love and the reports at a Packers camp is again, this is for, you know, long term fantasy leagues if you're in a dynasty league or whatever. But the reports on Jordan Love have been fucking terrible. He pretty much can't complete a pass. It, he's been so bad to the point where he's not even a consideration to be the backup quarterback this year. Tim Boyle is kicking his ass. Alex, <sighs> what are your thoughts here on Jordan Love? Is it too soon to panic? It's only been nine practices, or does the guy really just suck? No, actually, I want to rant a little bit because, you know, I'm deep into uh, Raiders fandom, and – before the draft, they were like, man, we got to get this guy, Jordan Love. Jordan Love, Jordan Love, Jordan Love. Because they all, like, you either love or hate Carr in the rain. There's, like, no in between, right? So they were like, let's get Jordan Love. All the Carr haters, man. And I'm not saying, like, maybe Carr is not the answer. I'm a big Carr guy. But, you know, Jordan Love was not the answer. I mean, you talked about it many times. His feet are terrible. Very bad decisions a lot of the time. So, I mean, it's like I kind of – you kind of just – put the pieces together and like, Hey, this is actually a thing. So you know what? I don't know. Isn't this Zucker's guy too? Andrew Zucker? Like, th doesn't he love Jordan Love? He thought he, he love loves him. Jordan Love. He says he's better than Tua. He's better than Tua. Yeah. No way, man. No <laughs> way. Like I, I saw that. And I was like, I, like mm, I don't know about all that, man. So I don't know. I, I kind of saw this coming. Uh, I thought the Jordan Love hype was crazy. Packers are crazy for drafting him in the first round when they obviously needed a wide receiver. You know what? You reap with you sow. So this this is all the Packers thing. And you know what? Panic already because you just wasted a first round pick on a guy. I wrote this in my article I just did, but I kind of compared it to remember when Fran Fraschilla went on TV, he does the NBA draft stuff, and he said Bruno Cabacolo is two years away from being two years away. Oh man, no, it's just mm. <laughs> that's how I feel about Jordan Love. Is there a chance he can make it? I think there's a chance. Is he not the fucking close to being ready? Yes. He's two years away from being two years away. His feet are terrible. He doesn't know how to read a defense. He throws picks nonstop. His accuracy is terrible. He's got a good arm. It's, yeah. there's, a, there's somewhere to start. But he's, he, he, he's miles away. Miles yeah. away. There are 
Rodgers basically needs to start for four years. Yeah. And to he have would, any prayer here. He's like 36, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so he's old. You, you're telling he's got to start till he's 40, which it's very possible depending on how his health is. But, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not very uh, – <laughs> I'm not, I don't. I'm not placing any bets on Jordan Love. I mean, my, my point is this should not have been surprising. He was not close to being ready. Oh no, that was the Raiders' baby, man. That was Raiders fans' baby. <laughs> they love. They love Jordan Love. And I was like, mm, there's better quarterbacks in this draft. If you're gonna draft one, don't draft that guy though. So far, not so good for Jordan Love. Last piece of news here: Tom Brady has announced he has a favorite target in Tampa Bay. It's not Chris Godwin. It's not Mike Evans. It's not Rob Gronkowski. It's not OJ Howard. No, Tom Brady. He has a big time fetish for those short white slot receivers. He said his favorite target in practice so far has been white slot receiver, Scotty Miller. You know Alex, what? what are your thoughts here? First of all, I got to give props to, to Scott. Cause I, not Scotty Miller. I'm talking about Scott from us, from Vendetta, because, man, I, I did not see that coming. When he said that, I was like, I mean, I guess after Mike Evans, after Chris Godwin, Gronk, and, you know, O.J. Howard, yeah, he'll, he might get, like, a couple of receptions here. But if he's already saying Scotty Miller's one of his favorites, then, I mean, uh, wow, good on you, Scott, for seeing that shit coming, because I would not have seen that coming. I think this is interesting, though, because last year Chris Godwin tore it the fuck up in the slot. If Brady wants Scotty Miller in the slot, Chris Godwin's going to have to be on the outside where I don't think he's as effective. So while this news may not seem important, I think it is important because I do think if Scott Miller gets 10 targets a game, that's 10 less targets that everybody else is getting. And your draft, if you want Chris Godwin, you have to take him absurdly. Like you're not getting him for cheap. You're not getting Mike Evans for cheap. You're not getting any of those weapons for cheap. If Scott Miller is a real part of the offense, that kills some of their value. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's you could probably get Scotty Miller for like $5 in an <laughs> And you know what? You might just make he the didn't, best. He, he didn't get taken in my league, and there's 13 teams. I, that, and that's crazy. And so, you know what? Scott would have picked him. And for <laughs> some reason, for some reason, Scott might have just, you know, came out with the best buy. But, yeah, it's crazy, man. So, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm not a big believer in the Tampa Bay offense, you know, and you guys have talked about that numerous times. I know we have even when I was on the show. So it's going to be interesting. There's a hit or miss on that Tampa Bay offense for fantasy. I think it's important to note that Tom Brady didn't go to Tampa Bay to not have power. Yeah. What Tom Brady says is going to matter. Uh, if he wants Scott Miller in the offense, he's going to be in the offense. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's just like, cause you want to make big, you want to make Tom happy. So. All right, so main segment today, position battles for quarterbacks. This shouldn't take too long. But I picked some quarterback battles, and we're basically going to say, of these two options, which guy finishes the season with the most fantasy points? So you're in your draft. You have to decide, okay, Alex, who's the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears? Which guy finishes with more fantasy points? This is a decision that if you're in a two-quarterback league, you probably have to make. So, Trubisky Foles. <sighs> Shit. Um, I got to go with Foles. I do. I got to go with Foles. Um, I think Mitch starts. I think uh, Nagy. I, I, is it Matt? Matt Nagy? Correct. Yeah. I think he's going to get sick of Trubisky. I think – and that's a long time coming because you can see – you can see some tension on the sideline when Trubisky makes a wrong decision or throws a horrendous pass uh, that – you know what, Nick Nick Foles is going to start just because Matt Nagy is going to get tired of Trubisky. And then, you know what, uh, Nick Foles has – he's sometimes inconsistent, but I think he just starts – or he's going to finish the rest of the year just because Matt Nagy is so tired of Mitch. He's so tired of that guy. I'm going to surprise people. I'm going to say Trubisky. Ooh. And then you're, you're like one of the biggest haters of him, so this is interesting. Okay. Here's the reason why. I think Trubisky starts 12 of the 16 games. Not because he's better, not because he's better, but Chicago will refuse to acknowledge he stinks. They will ride his ass as long as possible, as long as possible. It will go to the point where he's 
they're week 10. They're like five and four. They're just on the cusp. And Trubisky has a four interception game and they're out of it. And they're saying, fuck it. It's time. Foles is in. I really think Trubisky's going to start more than we think. I, I don't know, man. I give him, I give him six weeks. I give him six weeks. And I think, I think Nick Foles starts the rest of the year. You could easily, easily be right. I just, I just think that they will refuse to acknowledge he stinks. I, I couldn't tell you. I really don't. <laughs> I don't know why they're still with him, to be honest. So, I mean, Chicago fans of life still defend Trubisky to this day. To this day. Let's go to the Dolphins here. Tua Tugavaloa, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Which quarterback finishes with the most fantasy points this year? Mm, I don't know. This is I the hardest one for me. It is. Know. It is. I mean, because I don't know what the Dolphins are thinking. I don't know, um, you know, and a lot of Dolphins fans and some people think, you know, he should sit. His hip looks good. And I, you know what, Fitz Magic or not, I, I'm not confident in Fitzpatrick. I'm really not. Um, I'm not really like, hey, look, I need to start this guy. If Tua looks good, fuck, I don't know. Um, fuck it. I'm just going to go with Tua because I've been saying Tua's going to start week one, and I'm not even sure if he will or not. I'm just sticking to my guns. I'm going to say Tua is going to get the most. Um, I think he's just going to be everywhere. I think he'll he'll run the ball for the Dolphins. I think he'll pass the ball. I think he'll do all at all. I just I think I think he plays more, and I think he starts more games. But I can't say for sure. Don't quote me on it, but. Yeah, I actually had to look at the Dolphins' schedule for this one. I was like, all right, what kind of start will Miami get off to? Because I guess that probably depends on when Fitzpatrick eventually gets pulled. Now, if it were up to me, I wouldn't play Tua a snap this year. But but I'm going to guess they're going to play him. So they start with New England, not great. Buffalo, not great. Jacksonville is a little bit of an easier road. But then it's Seattle, San Francisco, Denver. Rough, rough start to the season for Miami. God damn, that's like a one in five right there. If you're going to pull Fitzpatrick, it would be, okay, we get the Chargers, Rams, Cardinals, Jets, Jets, Bengals. That's the stretch that I think if you're going to pull Fitzpatrick, Tua comes in, and at that point, he's just going to finish the year. So if it were up to me, I would say Fitzpatrick, but it's not. I think the Dolphins will play him sooner than we think because that early season schedule is brutal. And Fitzpatrick's old, too. I mean, it's just like, at that point, if they're one in five, it's just kind of like, hey, fuck, what do we have to lose, you know? And it's kind of shitty for Fitzpatrick because they play, you know, five or four really good defenses and then only one good, like, one really bad team. But that's just the way it works. Let's go to the Chargers here. Tyrod Taylor, Justin Herbert. Which quarterback finishes with more fantasy points? This is actually the one I'm so sure about. It's Tyrod Taylor. I think Justin Herbert's garbage. I said it as soon as he got drafted. I said, that guy's a bust. That is inaccurate as hell. He can throw the ball really far. Doesn't mean, and I know about quarterbacks that can throw the ball really far because the Raiders drafted Jamarcus Russell and can throw 65 yards on one knee. Could he hit anyone on his team? Hell no, he couldn't. But I, I tell you what, I know – I know quarterbacks that have big arms. Doesn't mean they can hit anyone. I I am so off the Justin Herbert train. I feel bad for Chargers fans, but I think Tyrod Taylor has a good mix of uh, throwing and running ability to his name that he'll be a good fantasy quarterback. Of course, as a Raiders fan, I hope that Tyrod Taylor is not that good and Chargers lose every game. But, you know. I – Totally agree with you. I think Tyra Taylor is going to start a hell of a lot more games than everybody realizes. Now, I have not seen Hard Knocks yet. I'm trying to find a way to watch it. But from what I've read, Anthony Lynn had to tell Justin Herbert to go through his progressions. Oof. <laughs> if you have to tell your starting quarterback to go through his reads and Herbert had no idea how to, there's a big problem here. There's a massive problem here. I think Tyra Taylor minimum starts till Thanksgiving. I, I think he gets 12 games at least. I don't know how that lines up with your Thanksgiving, but I think it's 12 games. And I think that could be Tyra Taylor, you know, misses one game due to injury or something. I, ha- I have no faith in Herbert at all. At all. Totally agree. Washington football team, 
I got it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne Haskins, Alex Smith, Kyle Allen. There's actually three guys here. Alex, who's your pick? Finishes the season with the most points. First of all, I want to say it should have been the Washington team of football, so their, abbrevi- their abbreviation could have been what the fuck, just WTF, mm. because you know what? The, what the fuck is, is Washington doing anymore? As much as I love Alex Smith, um, and I loved his story, his comeback and everything, I, don't, I can't see him playing a snap. Um, I mean, even though he's cleared for football, they're going to ease him back into it, kind of like Teddy Bridgewater. He, when he was you know, good to go in uh, Minnesota, they didn't play him. So I think it's going to be the same thing with Alex Smith. Um, it'll be, it's already a fucking awesome story that he might be able to play another snap in the NFL after having basically the same thing as Joe Theismann. But I think the Redskins are going to stick with uh, Dwayne Haskins. I think Kyle Allen's garbage, and he proved that uh, in Carolina. So I, that's Dwayne Haskins for me. I don't think there's any doubt for me. Side note, I have to share something funny in the Slack that just happened. So Serenity fired her first person today and Chad Bauman is officially scared for his job. So (laughs) I I needed to share that, that Chad officially (laughs) is nervous that he's on the hot seat. Well, he he still thinks Hertzgate is a thing. (laughs) After we gave him the point, we gave him the point and he was like, Hertzgate, it's Hertzgate. (laughs) I'm being fucked out here. It's funny, man. Slash inside job though. Uh, inside job always of course you know not not that i haven't had my fair share of hard questions you know what's the average salary for a fucking nfl player <laughs> like, how the fuck am i supposed to know uh <laughs> speaking of which friday will be game seven showdown me versus scott for trivia oh fuck you do it so oh, that'll, yeah. that'll be fun that's a good one i'm gonna go with haskins too i just think until alex i will not believe alex smith sees the field until i see it it's just I'm not I'm not counting on that. Kyle Allen was brought in to be a backup. I believe that they're going to give Dwayne Haskins every opportunity to take this job and run with it. So he would have to massively fuck up to lose his job, I think. I think so, too. I You would have to throw, like, 10 interceptions in, like, the first three games for, like, some shit like that to happen. All right. I saved the last one for you. Oh, fuck. I, if this is a Derek Carr, Mar- Marcus Mariota shit, I don't want to even fucking want to hear this. Derek Carr, I'm Marcus Mariota. <laughs> Bro, I don't know. I, I shouldn't even give this any fucking attention because already, and not just because of John Gruden, after John, after you made that article that John Gruden said he was hyping up Marcus Mariota, literally every other Raiders reporter in the training camp was like, he's garbage. He is playing like garbage. This I saw Brad that. Kowski, yeah, Bruce Gradkowski is saying, this guy can't even hold Derek Carr's jock strap. And I believe him. And you know what? As much – and I talked about it earlier. You know, there's a side of Raiders fandom that either loves Carr or hates Carr. People that hate Carr think – they thought Deshaun Kaiser was going to take over Derek Carr's job. I mean, anyone – Went, went for Trey on that one. Yeah. So, they thought anyone – any any Raiders backup is going to take Derek Carr's job. And you know what? You can show me how much they paid Marcus Mariota or whatever. He's going to be the backup. He's the backup. And it's just proved that. You know what? So even though John Gruden and Mike Mayock on draft night, they were big on Marcus Mariota, I think they're being proved very wrong here that they were wrong about this guy. So you know what? They have a very expensive backup that they might not need. And so you know what? Derek Carr is going to start 16 games. And you know what? Hopefully the Raiders make the playoffs. I know everyone's still looking at me crazy for that. But then, you know what? He's going to start 16 games. The Raiders fans are going to be mad. doesn't matter to me because Derek Carr is supposed to be the quarterback right now. I had to do, throw that in. No, that's all right. Uh, I mean, I had- if you don't say you're right, Trey, is it really you, though? If you don't say you're right, I mean, come on. I had to get. I had to see the reaction. I just – I needed to see the rant. That's all. Oh, man. I just oh, – God, it fucking makes me sick. All right. It's that time. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that guy? Guy you never heard of. Guy you will never draft. Somehow, some way, he will win you your fantasy league. Alex, what do you got? Dude, okay. First of all, I don't know if anyone said his name already. So, just let's throw that out there because I haven't been uh, in fantasy for a while now. But uh, after Thad Moss, and we already know about fucking Jeremy Sprinkle because we've said his name. But, you know, who's already ahead of the depth chart in Washington? is Logan Thomas. 
And I don't know who the fuck Logan Thomas is, but apparently, you know, according to depth charts and stuff, he's already ahead of uh, Jeremy Sprinkle. And so I'm going to go, who the fuck is that guy? He's a starting uh, tight end in Washington. He might really just turn some heads because Terry McLaurin's the only guy that's really relevant in Washington. You know, so if they have some tight end action there, I like Logan Thomas. Interesting. Former quarterback, too. Is he really? I didn't know that. Former quarterback. So, I was actually, you know, I'm going to throw Alex a bone here. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to give him a homer pick. All right. I like that. Foster Moreau. (laughs) Tight end. Oakland Raiders. Alex, how many touchdowns did he catch last year? Uh, Caught three or four, I believe. I think three. Five. He caught five. Five touchdowns. And that was only like three games, I think. 13 games. Oh, he played 13 games? Well, he was relevant in three of those games. (laughs) I don't know. I can't remember. Now, let me ask you this, Alex. Yeah. How many touchdowns did Darren Waller have last year? Three. Correct. Foster Moreau had more touchdowns last year. Then Darren Waller. I don't know. Maybe Darren Waller's a stud, and he is. Darren Waller's awesome. What happens if somehow, some way, two tight ends are relevant in this offense? I know they brought in Ruggs and Edwards. And what if Foster Moreau is so good that they have to run two tight end sets and he catches a bunch of balls and he sneaks in as a top 10 fantasy tight end? I. It's not impossible. I mean, if he already did, if if he, I, you know what, I'm gonna be a homer here. You brought, you walk, you open the door. I'm, I'm gonna walk in it. I'm gonna walk in it, man. You brought, anytime anyone gives my Raider Raider guys love, I got I gotta stick with it. Um, I will say I don't think Darren Waller. I wrote an article about it a long time ago. I don't think Darren Waller is gonna have as good a season this year. I think defenses are gonna hone in on him more uh, this year than they did last year. That might open up for Foster. I don't know. But I'm, I don't know. I'm really excited about the Raiders' offense, and I know everyone knows that by now. But I, I don't hate the pick. I don't, so I can't no. say you. Uh, not me. I don't <laughs> hate it. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it. Vendetta Sports Fantasy Show. Alex, do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, Black Lives Matter, man. I know that's a big thing right now, but yeah. uh, Black Lives Matter. Uh, you know what? If you're, <laughs> you're only right or you're wrong. On the right side is Black Lives Matter. I don't give a shit about anything else but black lives matter i don't know black lives matter man amen to that the uh the boycotts were definitely important to bring light to that kind of stuff but uh anyway so hit that subscribe button on youtube check us out buy a shirt if you can we'll have new designs up shortly but uh follow alex chick state pod myself trey dalbert that's gonna do it thank you guys for watching we'll see you next time